Hi, I'm Daniela and this is Jocelyn. Thanks for coming back to our channel. Today we're going to share with you five things to consider when choosing frozen sperm from an online sperm bank. When you're looking for a sperm donor using an online bank, there are a lot of things to consider. The things we're going to share with you will help you choose and filter your search online for frozen sperm. We thought it would be helpful to break down the important information we wish we would have known when we were choosing our online donor. So let's get right to it. Tip number one, become familiar with the different subscription types that sperm banks have. The important thing to remember is, at the end of the day, the sperm bank is trying to run a business. So the amount of things that you have access to from that business will vary. For instance, some sperm banks like Seattle Sperm Bank will offer you their all access pass, which is $50 for a three month subscription and gives you all access to everything they have to offer. As seen from the screenshot from their website, this all access pass includes things like an audio interview, handwritten messages, and genetic testing results. Other banks like Fairfax Cryobank will allow you to do an initial search for free, which includes a summary profile, staff impression, and genetic testing, but they charge extra for more in-depth information. As you can see from the screenshot on their website, it costs extra for things like an adult child photo set and personality type information as well as a full audio interview. Other sperm banks may allow you to create a free account and offer you all access for a certain amount of days, like a 30 day free trial. So it's great to look into many different types of sperm banks to decide which one is right for you. Getting familiar with the different subscription types will definitely better prepare you for the costs that are associated with using online sperm banks. We definitely have a bunch of free accounts on a bunch of different websites. Yeah, I know, and I still get emails like, try this new donor, look into this new donor. Buy one, get one free on this featured donor. They yeah. Do that too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This brings us to tip number two. Knowing the difference between ID and non-ID donors. We saw this a lot on different sperm bank websites and basically non-ID donors uh, agree to be a sperm donor but they ask that any identifying information not be shared with the recipients or any children created once they're adults. Non-ID donors will provide detailed non-identifiable information for their medical and personal profiles. ID donors provide the same level of non-identifying detailed information as the non-ID donors do, but they agree to allow that information to be released to the registered child once they reach the age of 18 or older. If they request it. You can choose to search for donors that are ID or non-ID when filtering your search and looking for an online donor. Tip number three, CMV status. What is it and why does it matter? CMV stands for cytomegalovirus. It is a member of the herpes virus family and affects 50 to 85% of American adults. Most people who carry the virus never show symptoms and honestly don't even know that they have it. Those who do show symptoms usually experience cold and flu-like symptoms when they do have the virus. Like the first time they get it, when mm -hmm. they first get introduced to it, and then it just lives dormant inside you. Once a person is infected, sometimes they may show symptoms like Jocelyn said, other times they may not, and then the virus just lies dormant in your body and with little to no risk of reoccurrence. So why does it matter when you're trying to conceive? When one person in a relationship has CMV, it is very likely that they are going to pass it to their partner and then both people in the relationship will have the same CMV status, negative or positive. If a woman never encountered CMV and her first exposure is during pregnancy, there's a 30 to 40% chance that her fetus will be infected as well. Many children who are infected by CMV during pregnancy go on to live normal and healthy lives. But 10 to 15% may have complications such as hearing loss, decreased motor skills, and neurologic abnormalities. CMV can also cause um, some congenital and birth defects. 
Therefore, if a woman has never been exposed to CMV or is considered CMV negative, it's important to find a CMV negative donor as well so that there's no added risk of exposure during pregnancy. Since so many people carry the CMV virus, it may be difficult to find CMV negative donors, but it's definitely something you want to search for if you're CMV negative as well. If you're working with a doctor or fertility clinic, they will be able to tell you your CMV status. For example, I was CMV negative, which we did have to filter when doing our searches, and it did narrow down our donor search pool when looking online, but we were able to find one. This brings us to tip number four, RH factor. Why does it matter? RH factor stands for the rhesus factor. I think I'm saying that correctly, but sorry if I'm wrong. Rhesus factor is an inherited protein that lives on your red blood cell. If your red blood cell contains this protein, then you are RH positive. So what is RH incompatibility? If a woman is RH negative and a man is RH positive and they conceive a baby, the baby may have RH positive blood inherited from the father. If the mother is RH negative, her immune system will treat the RH positive blood cells as a foreign substance. So if the mother is RH negative, her immune system will create antibodies to fight against the RH positive blood cells that the baby has. And if these antibodies circulate back into the developing baby, they will destroy the baby's circulating red blood cells. I had to sign a consent form stating that I'm aware that I am RH negative. If I am inseminated with semen from a donor who is RH positive, then I may face those risks that Jocelyn just described. Other risks to the baby would be anemia or severe illness, also the need for amniocentesis or an intrauterine treatment of the infant while it's still being carried, and in rare cases, their brain damage and death may occur. But there is a treatment for RH negative mothers who may be carrying an RH positive fetus. It's an injection that can be given to the mother that will prevent her body from creating antibodies that attack the baby's red blood cells. So if your RH factor is negative, what does this mean when choosing a donor? Well, simply it's recommended to look for an RH negative donor as well. And to learn more about your personal RH factor status, consult with your doctor. Consult with your doctor. Tip number five. Getting to know specimen types. There are quite a few. So IUI and IUI art specimens are pre-washed specimens, which means that they are spun and clean of any seminal plasma before they're frozen. ICI and ICI art. Those types of samples are used for intracervical insemination. They are standard or unwashed samples. So they do include seminal plasma. Additional processing may be required if you're going to use them for any other procedures other than intracervical insemination. In vitro fertilization specimens are unwashed, so they do include seminal plasma, but they can be combined to increase sperm count when using them for insemination. Art vials have slightly lower total modal cell counts than the traditional ICI or IUI vials. The specimen quality standard for art vials is less than 6 million TMC per vial. Art vials can also be used individually or combined for insemination. Check with your physician to determine which specimen type works best for you and the procedure that you're going through. Our physician recommended that we use IUI vials. There are many factors that go into choosing frozen sperm. Some things may be your personal preferences, while other things may be what type of procedure you're using. If you're interested to learn more in the different types of procedures to learn what's right for you, check out the link above. Additionally, when choosing an online donor, you can even filter some interesting things about the donor, like their education, whether or not they play sports, <laughs> even their astrological sign. Some banks will let you hear playbacks of audio interviews so that you can hear firsthand what the donor sounds like and their personal views and philosophies on life. Another interesting feature you can sometimes take advantage of when using an online bank is photo matching. With photo matching, you upload a picture of what you want your desired children to look like and they use this picture to find similar facial features of the available donors. Nothing to do with skin color, hair color, eye color, but more to do with the facial features represented in the available donors. 
we actually utilize photo matching when choosing our donor. Um, what we did was we narrowed down our top five donors and then we chose our number one based off of a photo that we matched with Jocelyn's photo. We hope this video helped you become a little bit more confident on your search for frozen sperm. For more helpful videos on modern day conception, please like and subscribe. And don't forget to turn your notification bell on to stay up to date on our conception journey. See you soon.